WHAS 11, weather first. Good evening, I'm meteorologist Alden German. A nice look out over Scottsburg this evening. Temperatures in the middle 40s here in the metro area with increasing clouds, but we are going to be staying dry. Any rainfall staying well to our south for tomorrow, but I am looking ahead to our next potential shot at some rain. I'll let you know when that could be ahead. You're watching the WHAS 11 night team. Right now on the WHAS 11 night team, an arrest in the death of a four year old boy. Today, the prosecutor detailing how an adult left a gun on the couch next to the child. The charges he's facing tonight. Plus, the money that we raise feeds thousands of children for an entire school year. Louisville's celebrity chefs come together in the kitchen to help meet a desperate need for our area's kids. And a big day in college basketball. At the center of it is a top 10 matchup in Lexington. While Louisville looks for a big win at home, we have crews on both courts. The WHAS 11 night team starts now. Tonight we begin with a new arrest in the death of a four year old. It's our top story here on the night team. I'm Shay McAllister, Zakaria Marcher appeared in court this morning. He is now charged with reckless homicide. Police say four year old Zachary and Depp was killed in an accidental shooting at a home at, on South 37th Street last month. Well, today in court, prosecutors detailed what led to that shooting. Defendant reported to officers he took the handgun from his waistband, placed it on the couch mm -hmm. and attempted to conceal the handgun from the victim before he exited the room. A short time after the defendant left the room, he heard a gunshot. He then found the victim suffering from a gunshot wound to the face. Today in court, a matcher pleaded not guilty. A judge set his bond at $10,000. He's scheduled back in court on February the 12th. And this afternoon, friends and family remembered a young life lost to gun violence, holding a balloon release on the corner where the 15-year-old was killed. One, two, three. three. Rest in peace, right, ma'am! Police say Raymel Atkins was shot multiple times at a home on Galbert Avenue in September of last year. He was taken to the hospital and that's where he died. It has been four months since his death and that case is still unsolved. Today, Raymel's mom remembered her son for who he was and promised she will continue to fight for justice. This was his whole neighborhood. All of these kids is the neighborhood and it saddens me to him for him to be in the same neighborhood all of these years to get gunned down on his front porch. He would have been getting his permit ready to get a job. He had been talking about a job since he was 13. That would have been the main thing he would have been on. Mama, I need I'm ready to go work. Well, if you have any information about this shooting, you're encouraged to call the anonymous tip line at 574-LMPD. Raymel Atkins would have been 16 years old this week. And new tonight, LMPD's non-fatal shooting squad seized 40 guns off the streets of Louisville. Police say detectives with the squad recently conducted an investigation which resulted in the seizure of the weapons as well as narcotics. Police say the investigation seized cocaine and meth. Right now, that investigation is still active, so police cannot reveal any more details, but they say they will give us an update when they can. And more developing news this evening, a special judge has set a hearing for the suspect in the Delphi murder case. Richard Allen is accused of killing 14-year-old Libby German and 13-year-old Abby Williams back in 2017. Special Judge Francis Gall set a hearing for February 12th in Fort Wayne, Indiana. However, one attorney for Allen filed a motion to ask for a continuance. Brad Rossi claims the hearing was scheduled without consulting his office on availability. In the filing, Rossi says he'll be out of town on personal matters. Prosecutors are also accusing Rossi and Allen's other attorney, Andrew Baldwin, of violating a gag order. Rossi says because of those accusations, the February 12th hearing needs to be moved to give him time to prepare and hire an attorney. Today, the United States launched new airstrikes at targets in Yemen with the backing of several other countries, including the UK. Those strikes are in response to repeated attacks on international shipping and naval vessels in the Red Sea. It is the second day the U.S. has led military strikes in the Middle East. ABC News details what happened. 
Officials confirming that U.S. and British forces, supported by six other countries, have unleashed a new large-scale attack on at least three dozen Houthi targets in Yemen. American F-18 fighter jets from the USS Eisenhower aircraft carrier, along with Tomahawk cruise missiles launched by the USS Kearney and USS Gravely, hitting 13 different locations. U.S. Central Command forces also saying earlier they struck six Houthi anti-ship cruise missiles prepared to launch. The U.S. also says it destroyed 12 Houthi drones on Friday, either mid-flight or ready to be launched from Yemen. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin releasing a statement saying the strikes on Yemen aim to disrupt and degrade the capabilities of the Iranian-backed Houthi militia from continuing to attack vessels in the Red Sea. According to Austin, the strikes targeted the Houthis' deeply buried weapons storage facilities missile and air defense systems, and radars. A senior Biden administration official says Saturday's strikes are unrelated to the action the U.S. took on Friday in response to the January 28th drone attack that killed three U.S. service members at Tower 22 Outpost in Jordan. This long-range supersonic B-1 bomber taking off to participate in those airstrikes. The U.S. hitting 85 targets across seven locations in Syria and Iraq. Before and after, satellite images show some of the destruction. As those airstrikes got underway, the White House signaling more were coming. We will not hesitate to defend our people and hold responsible all those who harm Americans. These responses began tonight, but they're not going to end tonight. President Biden has repeatedly said he does not seek direct conflict with Iran. Iran's foreign ministry saying the American barrage is a threat to regional and international peace and security. Chuck Sievertson, ABC News, New York. In the retaliatory strikes yesterday, the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights said 29 people were killed there. Meanwhile, 16 people were killed and 25 were wounded in Iraq, including civilians, according to the Iraqi government. Iraq's armed forces releasing a statement saying the strikes are a violation of the country's sovereignty and that they threaten the security and stability across the region. Back here at home, Governor Randy Bashir is responding to accusations that his administration failed to effectively lead the Department of Juvenile Justice. A new report released by Auditor Allison Ball shows the department has inconsistently applied policies surrounding isolation and use of force. In a statement, Ball said, the findings from this review demonstrate a lack of leadership from the Bashir administration, which has led to disorganization across facilities and as a result, the unacceptably poor treatment of Kentucky youth. Bashir was asked this week about those accusations. I run towards problems, not away from them. And we have made more changes over the past two years than we've seen um, in the history of that system. We separated boys and girls for the first time ever. They should have never been in the same facility. We've been able to separate those pending trial for very high level violent offenses from those status offenders and low level offenders. Governor Bashir also noted his push to open two new female only juvenile justice facilities. The governor pushed for funding in his budget proposal, but the one that passed out of the House did not include it. That budget is now headed to the Senate. And a new bill in Frankfurt looks to address disciplinary issues on school buses. Seven Louisville representatives filed the bipartisan bill. The bill would allow school bus drivers to refuse transportation to students if they cause an incident on the bus. It would also set forth policies that allow bus drivers to report and be heard during disciplinary proceedings. Celebrity chefs came together in Louisville tonight for a good cause. The Blessings in a Backpack Louisville chapter once again hosting its popular Celebrity Chef event, which benefits JCPS students. WHAS 1119's Alex Dieter and Aspen Hester share how this event helps feed local school-aged kids. A packed room for a good cause. The money that we raise feeds thousands of children for an entire school year. The Blessings in a Backpack Louisville chapter held its annual Pack the Sack event at the Olmstead. The event raises money to feed JCPS students on the weekends, some who may otherwise not eat until they return to school on Monday. There's almost 80,000 children in Louisville that qualify for our program. We had to cut 1,400 children in January because we didn't have enough funding to feed every child. 
Uh, so now we're feeding a little over 5,400 children in 41 schools. Blessings in a Backpack Managing Director Kim Holsklaw has been a part of the event since it started eight years ago. Each year we seem to be able to raise more money. The event once again hosted popular celebrity chefs from Louisville to curate the meal. Joshua Moore with Valor. Love Louisville, love the city, and you know, just love giving back to the community. James Moran with Omni Louisville Hotel. You know, I'm a hometown guy too, so um, Louisville's home, you know, so it starts at ground zero, so anything we can do as chefs to give back, and obviously it's cooking, right? So uh, just honored to be a part of it. And for one chef here tonight, it's about more than just sharing her talents and her gifts with the event. It's also about giving back to an organization that has touched her personally. I was actually one of the kids growing up that needed this program, um, so I just want to be able to help um, the kids that were just like me uh, to be able to, you know, always have a full belly and, and and just be taken care of. An organization close to her heart. Jacqueline Joseph with JJ Bakes and Co. made the desserts special for Blessings in the Backpack. Hopefully there's some leftover dessert. Yeah. Yeah, you know, because that thing was good. So. It takes $150 to feed a child for an entire year. Blessings in a Backpack is hoping to raise $200,000 through the event alone. In Louisville, Alex Dieterer, the WHAS 11 night team on your side. This week, nonprofits will rally in Frankfurt to push lawmakers to do more to support crucial community programs. The Kentucky Nonprofits Network will present on Wednesday on the state of Kentucky's nonprofits. They're asking legislators to support necessary reforms that they say are going to keep these programs afloat. They say the current grant and contract systems are causing delayed agreements and late payments. The organization says this is impacting their ability to recruit and retain workers.